on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. Eight thirty-seven. Now it's O'Connor and Company. Thanks for tuning in on this Friday. Coming up in thirty minutes, we're going to hand it off to Chris Plant. It's Larry O'Connor with Patrice Amuka, still sort of reeling Patrice from yes the audio that we just played of that yeah. uh, de- the devastation of this mother who had to see her seven-year-old son get uh, washed, swept away swept away by yeah. the floodwaters and uh, to his death. And uh, no, no one should have to deal with that and live with it. So it's hard now to sort of make this pivot to talk about the human devastation and the human toll of mm-hmm. the Hurricane Helene damage uh, and talk about how it's going to affect the election. But this is a reality, and it's something yeah. that we definitely, you know, I want to put everything in perspective here, but it's definitely a significant story here as well, as two of the states that are critical for this presidential election just four weeks away, four and a half weeks away, uh, are North Carolina and Georgia, two yeah. states that are reeling here. So what will this do to the Electoral College map? Let's bring in Brecken Thies. He's the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Brecken, thank you for joining us, elections correspondent for The Federalist. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Um, I know you've written about this and you've been trying to, there's two aspects of this. First of the, just the basic get out the vote and the machinations of voting when you don't have electricity, you don't have power, you don't have connectivity, and you don't have roads for that matter. Let's start with that. Uh, What is that aspect looking like right now in this area? Yeah, well, uh, as you mentioned, I mean, the devastation has been really horrific for for Georgia and for uh, North Carolina. And and in the place uh, that it's been the worst in North Carolina is Western North Carolina, the the Appalachia region um, in the in the mountains. And uh, there's still uh, untold amounts of people without electricity, without, you know, kind of basic necessities and uh, roads are still washed out and destroyed and buildings are still destroyed. And, uh, of course, all of that has a major impact on how we are able to conduct elections. You know, pr- maybe precincts don't exist anymore, uh, but polling places, places where people can go even register to vote. Uh, a lot of, um, at least initially, and, and some of them have come back online now, but uh, county boards of elections where all these things take place. We're, we're offline for a long time, and there are some um, emergency kind of munitions that they've, some of them have received, some of them have not received. And so um, what, you're, what you're really talking about here is, is the region of North Carolina that is going to carry this state for Republicans if Republicans win it. And you're talking about about 1.3 million registered voters over there. Um, and we don't know what it's going to look like because you're still in in the recovery phase and it's you know getting to one month out before the election well and that's concerning i mean both for i I think about the absentee ballots i think about people showing up to vote in person is is it correct that uh, typically you would have to show identification to vote in person um under state law and and is that changing so you know how will things look different for for from a voting perspective and and do you think that the 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 officials and apparatus set up is ready to receive or ready to resume at this point. Yeah, well, that's that's sort of key to, to all of this, is that in North Carolina, normally uh, there is a, a relatively strict ID requirement, both mm-hmm. for in-person voting and for absentee voting. So okay. actually, um, in North Carolina, when you do an absentee ballot, because anyone can request an absentee for any reason, um, there you don't need to have an excuse or anything like that. There's actually a little uh, cellophane window in the uh, in the envelope you send it back in that you have to provide a photocopy of a valid identification for absentee. Um, and then, of course, you have to show your ID also when you uh, go vote in person. Now, what the North Carolina State Board of Elections has done, they've come out with a couple of preliminary um, actions or recommendations. Uh, and, it, and, you know, they're not done. Uh, mm. And, and it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it should be mentioned that they are, they are a Democrat-run board. They kind of serve at the pleasure of Governor Roy Cooper. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in this deep red region of North Carolina, um, they are, they're, seem to be relaxing some election integrity, things like voter ID, like uh, requiring county boards of elections to uh, review absentee ballots uh, every week. Now that's that's postponed. It's not completely gone. Um, but uh, you're you're exactly correct about the voter ID thing. On on a press call uh, earlier this week with the with the board of elections, 
Um, you know, they they all but told the Western North Carolinians or, or, or people devastated by the storm that, you know, just to use uh, a process they have called the ID exception law, which does provide actually specifically for natural disasters within 100 days. But um, you're talking about people who, I mean, a lot of people probably still have their IDs. There are probably people who don't have their IDs as well who might need an exception. But they basically said, you know, go ahead and, and, and cite the exception. Um, and and just, to, just to put that into perspective of what this looks like for absentee ballots uh, in, in particular, already over 38,000 absentee ballots have been requested by the 25 counties in the disaster zone. Um, only 1,000 have been returned. So you're oh, looking wow. at a 37,000 outstanding deficit of absentee ballots that are just floating around in the region. Um, and, and by the way, just to put that in even more perspective, the margin of victory for Donald Trump in 2020 was 75,000. So exactly half the margin of victory of ballots is floating around out there. And what the, the Board of Elections has said is like, don't worry about those, uh, you know, come vote in person if you can. Um, and, and, you know, who knows if those ballots are washed away or if they still exist and they're just floating around and maybe yeah. they can be um, – uh, maybe they can be harvested. Who knows? Breck and Thies of the Federalist has been writing about the uh, potential election fallout from the devastation, specifically in North Carolina. And let's just be clear here. You just said these counties affected 25 counties. These are predominantly like overwhelmingly Republican counties. This is this is how they generally vote, despite the fact that a- Asheville itself, that city seems to be a little bit more of a Democrat enclave there beyond that. it's most- So the two issues here seem to be Breck and the actual legitimate Republican votes that might be hampered from coming in and being counted because of the storm. But then also, if this Democrat-run state board of elections decides to waive basic election integrity protocols that have been put in place because of the storm to accommodate the storm, that could open up the door for shenanigans. Is that So it's basically a double-edged concern here. Yeah, uh, that's that's exactly right. And and just to, we can we can break it down a little bit just so just so people understand. You know, I said there's 1.3 million registered voters in that region. Less than 300,000 of those are Democrats. Um, about half a million are Republicans, and about another half a million are unaffiliated. Although, like I said, and like you just said, this region votes heavily Republican. So even those unaffiliated voters are likely Republican voters as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you're 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 exactly right with the Buncombe County, which is where Asheville is, is a a small part of like it is it is part of it, but it is it is like kind of the Democrat enclave in a sea of red um, over over there. So that's that's what we're kind of looking at. We got to leave it there. Thank you for that reporting. I know you'll stay on top of it. We'll try to stay on top of it too. We are watching, and and basically everything you've just told us, yes, sort of shed some light on a lot of aspects of this, including, frankly, the lack of real urgency from mm-hmm. the federal government and from the Biden Harris administration. Uh, sadly, I I prefer not to go there, but we'd be naive not to. Thank you, Brecken. Thanks, Brecken. Thank you. Eight forty-five. WMAL.